This screencast is Electron Configurations Part 2, and we are going to be exploring shorthand electron configurations as well as orbital filling diagrams. Let's get started. All right, so if we take a look at nitrogen, nitrogen has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And that one's not too bad, but when we get to the elements near the bottom of the periodic table, writing out those electron configurations can get pretty long and tedious. So we want a shorthand way to write our electron configurations. So here's what you need to know. First of all, your noble gases are located in the far right-hand column of the periodic table. Depending on how your periodic table is numbered, this is either going to be column 18 or column 8a. What we do is we write the symbol for the noble gas in brackets for the one that's in the row above the element that we're dealing with, so the row beforehand. Then we write out the electron configuration for the row the element is in only. Let's take a look at the periodic table using nitrogen as our example, and I'll explain this a little bit more detailed. All right, so here is our periodic table, okay? And over here in this column, these are our noble gases, okay? So column 18 or column 8a. We're looking at nitrogen as our element, which is right there. So what we need to do is go to the row above nitrogen and the far right-hand column, and we see that our noble gas is helium. So we wanna write helium, the symbol for helium, in brackets, okay? Next we go to the row that our element is in. So nitrogen, okay, is in row number two, and we write the electron configuration for row number two. So we have 2s2, and we continue across the row, 2p3, okay? So let's take a look at what this looks like written out. All right, so let's take a look at what our shorthand electron configuration looks like for nitrogen. And here we see that it's He, 2s2, 2p3. Okay, what I want you to do now is try to write the shorthand electron configuration for cobalt. So pause the video and write the answer on a sheet of paper. Welcome back. Our shorthand electron configuration for cobalt is argon, 4s2, 3d7. Okay, let's try another one. This one I want you to try is for uranium. Okay, so please try to write the shorthand electron configuration for uranium. Again, pause the video and write your answer on a piece of notebook paper. And we see that the shorthand electron configuration for uranium is radon 7s2 5f4. This one is a little more tricky, and what you need to do is remember that uranium is actually part of row number 7 in the periodic table. The row before row number 7 is row number 6. So when we go up to the main body of the periodic table, look at row number 6, go to the far right-hand column, and the noble gas in that row is going to be radon. Okay, next we're going to take a look at orbital filling diagrams, and to do these we need to reflect again on our rules for electron configuration. So remember we had Hund's rule, which is where each orbital will fill up with one electron before doubling up, and that was the rule that was like a bus, where everybody takes their own seat and sits by themselves um, until all the seats are taken, and then somebody else will sit beside them. The same thing happens with the electrons. The other rule we need to review is the off bow principle, which says that our electrons will occupy the lowest energy level possible. This was the one that was like a ladder where we don't jump from the ground floor all the way up to step number five on the ladder. We go in order. We start with the first step, then the second, then the third. Okay, so let's take a look at how these rules apply to orbital filling diagrams. Okay, so for an orbital filling diagram, what we're doing here is we're showing the electron configuration and also how the electrons are spinning. Recall that in the quantum number, we had the spin number, and that was either positive one half or negative one half, and that indicated whether the electrons were spinning in a clockwise direction or in a counterclockwise direction. The orbital filling diagram is the way that we demonstrate that using an electron configuration. So here are the rules. You need to write out the electron configuration, no shortcuts. This one calls for the full electron configuration. Then you draw lines according to the orbital shape. So if we have an s orbital, you draw one line. 
P orbital, you draw three lines. A D orbital, you draw five lines. And an F orbital, you draw seven lines. You must draw all the lines, whether there are electrons in these positions or not. You fill the lines in for each section with the exponent number. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. For nitrogen, recall, our electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Okay, well here we see that for um, our first orbital, we have an s orbital, okay? And up here we're told that for an s orbital that we're going to draw one line. So I'm going to write out 1s2, and I'm going to draw one line above it, okay? And now I see here that I have an exponent of 2, and that's telling me that I have two electrons. And I represent my electrons with arrows. So I'm going to draw one arrow pointing up, and one arrow pointing down. And this tells me that I have one electron spinning clockwise and a second electron spinning counterclockwise. Next, I move on to my next part of my electron configuration, which is 2s2. Again, we see here I have an s orbital, so I'm going to draw one line again. So I write out my electron configuration, 2s2, and I draw my one line. Okay, and now my exponent here tells me I have two electrons. So now I need to draw two arrows again, also one up and one down, showing me that the electrons are spinning in opposite directions. Finally, I end up with this last part of my um, electron configuration, which is 2p3. The p tells me that I'm in the p orbital, and that means that I need to have three lines. So this time I write out 2p3, but now I'm going to draw three lines, okay? Now here is where Hund's rule comes into play. Notice that here I have three electrons that I need to place into my seats. And what I do is I place one electron in each seat before I can go back and add a second electron to any seat. So in my example here, I have three seats that are each half full with electrons. Now let's say, for example, I wasn't doing nitrogen. Let's say I was doing oxygen. And oxygen would be 2p4. If that were the case, I would go back here to this first seat and I would add a second arrow pointing down. So in that case, if it was 2p4, I would have one full seat and two half-filled seats. Okay, what if I was dealing with carbon and carbon would have had 2p2? Well, I still would have drawn all three lines Okay, but in that case, I would have one up arrow in the first line, one up arrow in the second line, and the third line would have no arrows. So I would have two half full seats and one completely empty seat. So again, to recap, we have to draw all the lines, whether there are electrons in those lines or not. We start with um, pointing the arrow up for the first electron, and that represents the electron spinning in a clockwise motion. And then once all seats have been filled, we can fill in with a second electron or second arrow pointing down, showing that the electron is spinning in a counterclockwise motion. What I'd like you to do is try um, a sample problem on your notebook paper. So chromium, okay, chromium has that electron configuration, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, notice that in this one, Chromium is one of our exceptions, so we have 4s1, 3d5, and you're going to have to show that with the electrons as well. So I want you to do the um, orbital filling diagram for chromium, and I also want you to do the orbital filling diagram for platinum, which is a little bit longer, okay? But I want you guys to get some practice with this. So please pause the video, okay, or stop the video because we're at the end, and I want you to do the orbital filling diagrams for chromium and platinum, add those to the previous um, shorthand electron configuration problems that you did. When you finish with your problems, either show your work to Mrs. Benke or take a picture and upload it in Schoology so that you can get credit for watching this video.